Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are making paper clay. I ran out last night so I thought today was a great day to go ahead and make another batch and do it all on film. Now if you've seen my previous videos on this clay, please watch this one because this one is going to be a lot more helpful. And I've actually tweaked the recipe a little bit as well. Uh, the ingredients have changed a little bit to make it into something a little more user friendly I think. So yeah, this video should be helpful to you and I answer some questions that I wasn't able to answer in my previous video. Alright, so the original recipe is not my own. It belongs to Scott Stahl. He put it out many years ago. He has Stalloween.com. I'll put that up on the screen for you. Alright, so this isn't the only recipe. This is the one I like to use. It doesn't mean it's the best one. I just enjoy this one. It works well. It's very, very sturdy and I can make it up in a few minutes. All right, so let's not talk anymore and we'll just get over to my kitchen sink and we'll make some clay. All right guys, so we're gonna whip up this clay together on film and hopefully this will make some of you um, feel a little, bit, a little bit better about it. I know that it can be a little bit distressing when you're first making it because it doesn't, it doesn't feel like you think it should feel. And sometimes it's a little bit too wet and sometimes a little bit too dry. And the, the one thing to remember is you can't really mess this up, really. I mean, if you follow the ingredients, um, it might come out a little bit too wet, might come out a little bit too dry, but it's still going to work. Okay, so there's six cups of flour in here, and now I use a lot of salt. Okay, I didn't do this before, but I actually put a tablespoon of salt for every cup of flour. And the, I do that because salt actually kills the mold from happening, any mold from happening. And I don't want mold ever to happen. I work so hard on my things, I don't want to come in there one day and see any mold. So I use a lot of salt. So that's one tablespoon of salt for every cup of flour. So I've put in six tablespoons of salt, and that's iodized salt. Okay, and I use a whole cup of corn, liquid cornstarch now. And I didn't do that before, I used to use a half a cup. Uh, to make one liquid cup of, of cornstarch, I put one tablespoon of powder. That's this stuff here, one tablespoon into a cup of hot water, mix it up, and then throw it into the pot and let it come to a boil. And I just throw it in there uh, while it's hot. Okay. And I'm going to put in a whole cup of tacky glue. And before I believe I used to put a half a cup. Now I just throw in a whole cup. A half a cup would work too. Like I said, you can play around with it. So there's a whole cup of tacky glue throw it in there. Oh, and to cut down the smell of the cornstarch, because if you leave this for a couple of days, um, you will start smelling the cornstarch. So to kill that smell, I put in two capfuls of Mr. Clean. doesn't have to be Mr. Clean, just anything that smells nice, any cleaner that smells nice. So I'm just going to put in two capfuls. Okay, now I'm going to stick in a cupful of drywall compound. And this recipe will work without it. So if you don't have it, don't worry. Um, actually, one of my video updates, I made it without the drywall compound because I didn't have any on hand. And I was worried about it, but it actually set very nicely and it was, it was sturdy. And there was nothing wrong with it. The only difference I found was it wouldn't stick to masking tape on its own. So without the drywall compound, it wouldn't stick to the masking tape. Um, so I had to cover the masking tape with paper towel dipped in glue. Newspaper would have worked as well. And then it, stu it stuck fine. I put in a heaping cup in. I, uh, I like the, the texture that drywall compound gives the clay, so a little extra doesn't hurt anything. Alright, so now we're going to stick in some water. And I'm going to start with four cups of hot water. So there was four, and now I'm going to uh, mix this up a little bit with my spoon, my hand beater. Okay, I'm going to stick in just another cup, maybe a little less, maybe three quarters. I just stuck in another three quarters of water. And I'm going to see, I think that's going to be enough. Yeah, you know, I think that's, that's enough water. So that was four cups plus three quarters of a cup. Four and three quarters cups of hot water. 
and I think that is enough. So you can see that's like light pancake batter. Um, before I was putting in too much water, it always turned out, and it wasn't an issue, um, but it does make a difference in the texture, so yeah, I was using too much water before. I mean, I could put in another cup of water and it wouldn't hurt anything, but I like the texture better when there's not so much water. And it makes a nicer clay. Alright, and I should have added, I really didn't know how much water I was going to stick in here because lately I've just been making this clay uh, without uh, measuring the water. I've just been pouring it in as I needed it. But yeah, I think that uh, four and three quarters cups is enough. Okay, so we're going to put in our paper insulation. Alright guys, this is my paper insulation and I've got it inside garbage bags because my original bag is falling apart. This is called uh, Weather Shield. It doesn't matter which brand you get. And I just googled it and asked if it was safe to breathe or safe to work with and it absolutely is 100% safe to work with. There's a lot of dust that does fly off of here, but all it mostly is made of is recycled newspaper. I didn't know that. But yeah, it's safe to work with, but I still uh, recommend wearing a mask because there is you know, quite a bit of dust that comes off of there. I open my window as well, and if I don't have a mask, then I put a towel just over my mouth so I'm not breathing all of that dust in. But 100% safe, as far as Google is concerned anyway. Okay, so it's better to start off with a little bit and get it uh, thoroughly mixed up, and then you can put more in. But before we turn on the beater, I'll just get this all wet too so we don't get so much dust flying around. Because there's a lot of dust that comes off of this. But it's better to wear a mask if you have one. Alright, so now I'll turn my beater on. Alright guys, I have to stop with a quick disclaimer. This hand mixer I got at the thrift store for a couple of dollars. I don't care if I kill it. It has made countless batches of paper clay for me. But like I said, it was so cheap. If I do burn out the motor, it's no great loss. Please don't use anything that was real expensive. If you want to make paper clay, find yourself a hand mixer from the thrift store. That way, if you do burn out the motor, it won't be any great loss. Time for some more. Okay, so I can feel it's quite heavy now. So when I've turned my beater on, I'm going to start at the surface and kind of work my way down so I don't want to overwork the beater right off the bat. Okay, so it needs a little bit more insulation. It's coming along pretty nicely though. I'm liking it. And right about now you'll realize that one of those drills with the uh, industrial mixer and a bucket would come in handy and it would be so much faster than doing it this way. But if you don't have one, then doing it this way works, it works just as well. This takes longer. I'm going to put a little bit more in there, not too much. I'll see if my, my uh, mixer will do this. I'll start at the top and work down again. Start at the surface.
I just want to lift up any stuff on the bottom. And you know what? I think we're there. I think this is it. That feels pretty awesome. So I let my mixer do a lot of the work and like I said you start at the surface of the clay and just kind of skim along the top and kind of push it down towards the bottom. You'll hear your mixer make, you know, they'll make funny noises if they're if they're being overworked. But I think this is it guys. I think that's this will be my clay for today. I could spread this out with a knife. Okay, so here's my cardboard piece. I have masking tape here, tin foil, and then plain cardboard. I'm going to show you. It sticks to everything. So like I said um, earlier, when I made this without the drywall compound, it slipped right off the masking tape. So I had to cover the masking tape with um, another material, and then it stuck fine. It sticks wonderful to the masking tape. Okay, and now I'm just going to put it right on my tin foil. And I don't put a heavy-duty layer on. I usually thin out the layer pretty good. Okay, so when you're working with ceilings and the thing is upside down, and you're sticking to things upside down, sometimes it will fall. It depends on how you made it. Like, if you have too much water, it would slip off. But you can get it to stick. You just have to play with it a little bit more. But this, you can see the texture on this is almost perfect. It's, it's sticking right away. So the question I get a lot as well is how do I apply it? And this is exactly how I do it. I just spread it along with my fingers. And that's a pretty thin layer. So you can see it's going to stick to all those surfaces, no problem. Well, this batch I made, you can see a little bit sticky on my fingers, and that's totally fine. I don't mind that at all. I can take a little bit off. I can roll it into a ball. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to make a little something, and I'm going to stick it in the oven. I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's dry. When I'm working on a big house, like a tree house or my gnome home, and I put this on the walls, obviously can't go in the oven, uh, it takes one to three days to dry depending on how large the area is, how, how thick your clay is. Some areas will be a little thicker than others, so you have to make sure it's completely dry before you paint it. Uh, three days is the longest I've ever seen it take to dry. What I do is I put it on my walls and I stick fans on it. Usually you have two or three fans going at once, and I'll leave it overnight and usually by the next night it's dry enough to paint. Alright, so I'm just going to cover this cardboard with my clay. I just made a little heart, just keeping it simple today. <laughs> One of the questions I get a lot is if we can sand this stuff. And you know what? I've never tried it, so I'm going to do that today. I'm going to try it once this is dry. Okay, there's my little heart. I'll stick that in the oven, but first I'm going to make one on foil as well just because. I got my oven at 180. Feel free to play around with that as well depending on how hot your oven is. Uh, go between 180 and 190. If you go too high, the only thing that will happen is the piece will start to burn and it will turn brown. And I think you get a little bit of shrinkage uh, from that as well. So it's best to dry the paper clay at a low temperature. So somewhere between 180 and 190. And I'm just going to pop these right on top of a pan I have in here. And I'll set the timer. I'll let you know how long it takes. Okay, so a half an hour in the oven. Just been 30 minutes has gone by. And you can see a little bit dry on the sides, still damp in the middle. So that is not paintable yet. And I noticed something today I never noticed before. This one I made with tin foil, still damp all around. So the one with cardboard dried a little faster. So I guess the cardboard soaks up the moisture, maybe? That's interesting. I've never noticed that before. So both of these are going to go back into the oven. I'm going to set the timer for another 30 minutes. So there is another 30 minutes in the oven. This one is completely dry. The one on the cardboard. And this one, almost there. <laughs> There's a little bit more drying time there. You can see the difference in color. And that is still damp. So I wouldn't paint that yet. Uh, yeah, so I guess the cardboard does make a difference in the drying time. And I did not know that before I did this video. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to try sanding this too. I'm using an emery board. Look at that, it sands as well. Yeah, it's sanding. You know, I've been asked that so many times over the years, and I always say I don't know. Now I can say, yes, you can. You can sand it. That's so cool. Okay, one more little thing. 
You can see there a little spot missing. I don't know if it uh, came off in the oven or not, but all I would do on something like that is just put in more paper clay. I would just fill in that little little spot and then let it dry. And actually, that's how I build some of my characters as well. Um, I do layers. My little troll, I don't know if you've ever seen him, my little troll Louie. I built him up in layers. It took layers and layers and layers. I actually uh, made him over a course of two days, I believe, and um, built up little facial features just by doing it this way. Little, I would add a little feature by rolling up some clay or whatever and just adding that and then letting it dry and then building onto it. So, yeah, you can rebake this over and over and over and over and over again. It doesn't matter. All right, so that was 180 in the oven at an hour, and you can see how thin that is. So you can imagine a wall, if you put this on a wall, how long it would take with a fan. So you have to let it completely dry. And uh, patience um, definitely goes a long way with this stuff. Oh, the last thing I should say is um, you can keep this in the fridge. When you're not using it, put it in the fridge. And it should keep up to about two weeks. I've seen it last longer. I've, I've had it in my fridge some, a couple times up to three weeks. But anything after that is going to start uh, molding. So you have to use it up within... Oh, one to two weeks, three weeks at the most. You'll know. You'll have to take a look at it and see. Every clay is going to be a little bit different. So all the stuff that we use today can go down the sink. Uh, hot, soapy water. And the faster that you clean this stuff, the better. Uh, if you leave the things sit too long with like drywall and the glue and all that kind of stuff on them for too long, then you know what's going to happen. It's going to be a little bit harder to wash them. So I just soak them in hot, soapy water for a couple of minutes and then I wash them up and everything can go down the sink. Alright guys, so that's the end of this video. I hope that was helpful. And if you make a batch with this new tweaked recipe, please leave me a comment and let me know how it turned out. I'd love to hear. And you can check me out on Facebook, Dollhouses and the things that go in them, and post your pictures there as well. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.